Okay, the first one, the first type of investment appraisal technique we're looking at is called payback period. Now, the payback period, this is a period of time needed for an investment project to earn enough profits to pay back the initial cost of the initial investment. So how long is it going to take for us to be able to recoup our initial investment? So we're looking at a time time period here. How many years, how many months until our investment pays back enough money to cover the cost of purchasing that initial asset. So here we are, we have got our hair salon, hairstyles, a classy joint, anything with a Z in its name is super classy, we know that, marketing. Okay. Hairstyles are going to pay $1 million to equip their stores with new styling equipment. We can see their new styling equipment down in that picture in the bottom right hand corner. I have no idea what it is. I'm a man. Um, is it hair drying things? Okay, so they're going to pay $1 million to be able to dry their customers here with this new styling equipment. Now they expect this new equipment to generate additional cash flows over the first four years of the following amount. Okay, year one, the hairstyling equipment is going to bring in net cash flows of 210. So this is cash flow with the operating costs taken out. So net cash flows, year one, 210k. Year 2, 350. Year 3, 480. And in year 4, year 4 is bringing in $350,000 in the net cash. <coughs> Our first step is to work out what we call the cumulative cash flow. So you're going to have to put another table there. Sorry, not another table, another column in your table and calculate the total running cash flows. So we can see here that in year 1, we've got 210000 Year 2, 350, 210 plus 350 will give us total cumulative cash flows. Year 1 plus year 2 of 560. Year 3, if we add another 480k onto that 560, we end up with 1,040,000. And total cumulative cash flows across those four years is almost $1.5 million. So, step one, work out the cumulative cash flow. You'll need to throw down another column beside your net cash flows and calculate this. Okay, now we do know that the payback period is going to take more than two years. We front it up with a million dollars and we can see that it's not until year three that we get enough net cash to pay back that initial 1 million investment. So it's more than two years, but it's less than three years. After year two, we need another $440,000. 560 plus 440 will give us our initial investment of $1 million. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to work out an average monthly cash flow for that third year. Now, all we're going to do, take the year three cash flow and divide it by 12. So that divided by 12, that's the number of months in the year. 480 divided by 12 gives us 40. So that's 40,000 per month on average net cash flows. We need another 440. 440,000 divided by 40,000 will give us a number of months to reach 440,000. Okay, so 440 divided by 40 is going to give us the number of months. Right. We can see that the payback period here is almost three years. It's two years and 11 months. Now, never Ever in the history of IB exams has a student had to calculate a payback period where the months have worked out perfectly. Typically 
you'll do your sums and you'll get a figure coming out the end something like 4.73 and all we're going to do is round up we've got always 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 going to round up so 4.73 will turn into four years not seven months we're going to round it up seven three eight months always round your figure up Okay, we need to look at advantages and disadvantages of using the payback period as a method of investment appraisal. We'll start with advantages. Show me. It's the simplest and the quickest method of investment appraisal. Full stop. Nice and easy to calculate. Show me. It's really useful for firms that um, do not have significant cash flow like, where cash flow is dead important to certain firms now these firms are going to be able to tell how long it's going to take for their hard earned cash to be able to be recovered how long the, the cash they've fronted up with how long is it going to take to be repaid it's important for these firms show, show me we'll um, using the investment the payback period will be able to see whether or not the firm is actually going to be able to um, earn enough in net cash flows to be able to um, purchase the asset before it needs to be replaced. So if the useful life of the asset is eight years and the payback period looks like it's going to take ten and a half years to pay back, then it's very unlikely that the business is going to go ahead and purchase the asset. Now we can take different investment projects, so project A, project B, and we can compare them. And we can work out the payback period for each investment type, and then perhaps we will decide on that investment which has the shortest payback period. Show, show me. Right, and it's good that it assesses only the short term. Because we're only dealing with the short term, payback calculations are going to be less prone to forecasting areas, errors. If we're only looking three, four, five years into the future, then there are less chances of us making significant mistakes in our ability to forecast net cash flows. Disadvantages. Now remember these advantages and disadvantages are very important if you are asked to evaluate an investment using this method. So first disadvantage, it is going to encourage a short term approach to investment. Now some of our investment projects are, should be very long term. If we are looking at purchasing a building, um, building a factory, we're looking at 20, 30 years into the future. But payback period focuses on the short term. And so just using this method to evaluate our investments, appraise our investments, we may be ignoring the potential gains that come with long term investment decisions. Show, show me. Now the contribution per month, remember when we go into that final year and we divide by the number of months to find the average monthly cash flow? Well the contribution per month is unlikely to be constant, so those average monthly cash flows, we're going to get lots of seasonal variation in our sales. So lots of December net cash flows are going to be much higher than our cash flows in the middle of August. Show me. Right. With the payback period, the focus is on time rather than profit. So we're just focusing on how fast can we pay back this money. So time rather than profits. And profits is really the main aim of most firms. Show, 